This video will deal with two learning targets. One, I can predict if a reaction is product or reaction favored from a graphical or numeric uh, information. And number two, I can calculate concentrations at equilibrium. So we've talked about Le Chatelier, and based on Le Chatelier, we've been able to talk about which direction the reaction will shift in order to re-establish equilibrium. Um, that's just conceptual. We can tell when you add stuff or when you change the pressure which direction we're going to favor uh, reactants or product in order to uh, re-establish equilibrium and make the um, concentration amounts equal K again. There's something called the reaction quotient, which is Q, um, which is a numeric way to see which way the reaction needs to shift. So Q is basically the same thing as K. Uh, you plug numbers directly into the K expression, just like you would to solve for things at equilibrium, except Q is uh, what it is if we're not at equilibrium. So essentially, if you take your equilibrium expression with your concentrations of product divided by concentrations of reactant, and you plug in concentrations when you're not at equilibrium, what you get out isn't K, it's Q. Okay? And then from Q, we can compare that to K and determine whether the reaction should shift toward reactants or shift toward products um, to get a final answer. So essentially, the reaction quotient tells us what, at this given moment, at this given snapshot, not equilibrium, what the ratio is between reactant and product. And when comparing that to the equilibrium ratio, see which way the reaction should shift. So if you calculate the Q, if you put numbers in and you say, oh, wow, oh, Q is K, then that means you're at equilibrium. If you put numbers in, then when you're not at equilibrium and you find that Q is greater than K, okay, Q is a bigger number than K, then in order to decrease the value of Q, you need to shift towards reactants, essentially decrease the numerator you know, shifting toward a greater concentration in the denominator to bring your Q down to what K is. And if you put numbers in not at equilibrium and find that Q is less than K, we need to increase production in order to um, make that ratio bigger and bring us up to the value of K. So let's we'll try some of these in class in terms of looking at what Q looks like versus K. But what you need from this video is just this relationship. Write down and understand what is the relationship between Q and K. And again, Q is putting in numbers into the equilibrium expression when we're not at equilibrium. It's the only difference. The big part of this video that is the harder concept is how do we calculate equilibrium concentrations and even the KEQ when I give you information that's not at equilibrium. So solving for information when I'm at equilibrium, it's just a question of algebra. You plug in the numbers, you solve, we're good to go. But when I'm given a problem where I give you an initial amount and not a final amount, then we need to use the stoichiometric relationships, so the mole ratios of the equations, in order to solve for the information that we need. There's a very systematic way of problem solving this that you basically have to just understand and apply, and then these problems don't get too hard. And the procedure is called an ice table. So an ICE table, what ICE stands for is an initial concentration, the change in concentration, and what the concentration is at equilibrium. So again, we'll be using an ICE table when you're given a problem where you're told initial amounts and not final amounts. So given initial amounts, you then have to calculate how they would have changed as the uh, reaction had proceeded, and then from there get to equilibrium amounts. So here's a little information that I can give you. The first uh, row, again, is the initial amount, and you see each column corresponds to one of the substances. A lot of times our initial amounts will either have reactant amounts or product amounts. If we have both, that's fine. When it comes to how they change, they change based on their stoichiometry. For, so for the uh, problem on the screen, my substances are at a ratio of one nitrogen to three hydrogens to two ammonias. So in the course of a chemical reaction, if my reactants are predominantly becoming products, like I'm shifting toward production, that means my nitrogen is going to go down, my hydrogen is going to go down, and my ammonia is going to go up. 
So over the course of a chemical reaction, especially when that's reversible, we know that it's going to be going in both directions, but in general, one side will predominate. You're either going to decrease your reactants and increase your product, or decrease your product and increase your reactant over time. There might be subtle shifts, but in general, for the whole reaction, that's going to, ha that's going to happen. Now, in relation to how much they go down by, because of the fact this chemical reaction and what you have here is the recipe, they will go down by their mole amounts. So if I have a lot of reactant and not a lot of product, my nitrogen will decrease at a ratio of one mole of nitrogen to three moles of hydrogen. So if nitrogen goes down by one, hydrogen will go down by three, and they will produce two of the ammonia. So in the change part, we'll be applying the stoichiometric relationships to how they will decrease and increase. And then at equilibrium, it's just a question of adding then the change. If I have an initial amount and nitrogen changed by one mole, then I would subtract one mole from my initial for my equilibrium. If hydrogen had one mole and it changed by three, then I would subtract three from it. If ammonium wasn't there at all and it went up by two, then my equilibrium would be a positive two. Conceptually, this might seem weird. I'll walk through a problem that I think will make it pretty clear, but the idea here is figure out the initial concentrations because they're given, figure out how they would change, and they change by their stoichiometric relationships and then either add the change or subtract the change to figure out what the equilibrium amounts are. So the first thing I do is I set up the structure of my ice table. I write down my chemical reaction and then my ice on the left-hand side. Some people actually call these tables rice tables, indicating that you have to include the reaction on the top. If you don't include the reaction on the top, you don't know what substances you're talking about when you write down their information. Now I'm given the concentrations of a couple of these things, again, before the reaction has started. So I have 1, 10, 10 to negative 3 of the hydrogen. And I've got 2, 10, 10 to negative 3 of this guy. So those are my initial amounts. And based on the information presented, it's a closed system, here's what we put in, you can make the assumption that this is 0. They haven't put that in at all. Now, this uh, reaction is allowed to come to equilibrium, and then it says at equilibrium, so down here at equilibrium, the HI concentration is this. And that's the information from the ice table as it would fit. Now, it asks me to calculate the KEQ. In order to calculate a K, we're going to have to write a K expression for this. Right, products over reactants. So K equals the product squared over the reactants. So those are the information I have to figure out. But this right here, right, this whole entire thing is at equilibrium. So I need to figure out what they are at equilibrium to plug them in over there. Well, I've got HI at equilibrium, and I know what these were initially. Now i got to figure out how they changed. And to figure out how they changed, we have to apply the stoichiometry. Okay? Given this information over here, it was initially 0. It changed to be 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. The change then was I added 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. So as these two reactants were put in, they produced 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 of that HI. That means as this went up, these two things had to go down because that's how uh, Le Chatelier works, essentially. You always shift to produce one side or the other. So these are both going to be subtractions. I decreased that side by how much? Um, now, by how much did I decrease them by? Well, given the fact that this relationship is a 2 to 1 to 1, if this side increased by 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3, that means this side decreased by half of that. Because if this side goes up by 2, this side goes down by 1. Because this mole relationship is a 1 to 2 and a 1 to 2. If this had like a 2 coefficient here instead, it would have been going down by 1.87. So right here, we apply the stoichiometric relationship, 2 to 1 to 1. 
So this went up by 1.87, this went down by half of 1.87, which if you calculate that, so now in order to calculate the equilibrium amount, we execute this calculation. 1 times 10 negative 3 minus this thing gets me this number of 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5 and 1.07 times 10 to the negative 3. Now I have equilibrium amounts of every substance. I can plug that into my K expression and solve. This part right here is probably the part we need to practice the most. But again, understand I just applied the stoichiometric relationship. The other thing I might have to do is calculate the actual concentrations rather than the um, KEQ. It's a little bit uh, different, takes a little bit more algebraic understanding, but we're going to walk through this one too. So again, given the problem, it says I initially have one mole of H2 and one mole of I2. This table is always the concentrations. Luckily, this is in one liter, so the concentration of H2 and I2 are both one. So I have one of H2 and one of I2. And then it says I'm allowed to come to equilibrium, and that's it. Okay, so it gives me no other information. It does give me my K this time. So I know what K is, I just don't know the concentrations. I need to figure out the algebraic kind of representation of these and then plug it in. So again, just like the last problem, they give me information about the reactants. I can assume my product is zero because I didn't put anything else into my vessel. And then we have to execute the change. I don't know anything about equilibrium yet, but I do know stoichiometrically how this reaction is going to work. If I only have reactants, I'm going to make products. They are going to be made at a proportion of one to two because that's how it works. So I don't know how much they're going to change by. I don't know what the change is, so I'm going to say it's x. But I do know if these guys go down by x, and they will go down by the same proportion because they are at a 1 to 1 mole ratio. If they both go down by x, this is going to go up by 2x because that's how the stoichiometric relationship works for this equation. Now if these go both... Go, both go down by x, that goes up by 2x. Now I apply the math. That means in the end, the concentration of H2 is going to be 1 minus some number, x. Same with this. And proportionally, this one's going to go up by 2x to make it all work. So we take that information now and we plug it into our k expression. So if I take that information and plug it into my k, here's what I get. k is 50.5. Concentration of HI is 2x. Concentration of each of these things are 1x. Algebraically, you should be able to do this. It would end up looking like a quadratic, which you can solve. You guys have a calculator. You probably even have like a quadratic calculator on there. But there's a trick to this one, and I will only give you problems with this trick this year. AP would be harder, but I will give you the trick this year. And the trick is, if we look at this problem... I have 2x quantity squared on top, and in the bottom, I have a square also. This is really 1 minus x squared, because it's 1 minus x times 1 minus x, which means if I take the square root of both sides, which is totally fine if I do it to both sides, if I take the square root of this side, taking the square root of the 2x squared will bring it down just to 2x, taking the square root of the 1 minus x, We'll bring it down to just 1 minus x, and now the problem is much easier to solve. So if I execute this, square root, square root of that is 7.106. Now I can multiply that up, group like terms, and I find that my x equals um, 0 0.780 if you solve that algebraically. After all that work, still not the answer, right? The question asked was, what is the equilibrium concentration? You defined X as the amount these things changed by, but you still need to plug them in in order to solve for the concentrations. So the concentration of H2 is 1 minus X. I2 is 1 minus X. HI is 2 times X. So if you actually plug that in, and solve these, then I get that the concentration of H2 as well as the concentration of I2 is 0 
And then I get that the concentration of HI, that 0.78 times 2, that is 1.6. Sig fig wise, I probably need three sig figs, so this is 1.65. I fully accept that I think this is challenging, and we will have a couple days to practice. This really pushes you to apply algebra to a chemistry situation. Okay, so go ahead and do the form. Really focus on conceptually understanding the change component because that's the most important in terms of newness for you. And I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Have a nice night.